No, it's not a scam. Here's the IRS rules and regulations. This is above board. This is the way they want everybody to depreciate their building. And so um, nowadays, uh, if there's any investor that doesn't know about cost segregation, then they probably have the wrong accountant. What's going on, everybody? Chris Noggle here. Welcome back to the Money School Podcast. And today we are talking taxes. We're not talking tax aversion. We're not talking any of that stuff. We're talking real tax savings through something that maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't, but it's called cost segregation. Now, when I first talked to this individual, Joseph, I, I, I immediately thought, oh, he's just talking about huge projects. He's talking about hundred unit apartment complexes. And I'm like, you know, that might not be my audience. That's definitely not me. You know, I'm trying to just focus on the onesies, the twosies, you know, the duplexes. And then I read into his stuff and it was like, they are one of the few companies out there that do cost segregations in the smaller criteria, like the single family houses. So folks, we are going to literally dive deep into this and it's going to help you. I don't care if you're a small investor, a huge investor, you're going to see how you can benefit from cost segregations and not pay Uncle Sam as much in taxes. So welcome to the show, Joseph. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Tell everybody a little bit about your company, yourself, and then what I'd like to do is just kind of go back a little bit in time into your past of how did you land in this space? I mean, it's it's definitely a very important space, but how did you get here? Yeah, I've got, that's a good story. <laughs> so um, basically, my company does cost segregation. We'll dive in, into what that means, um, you know, as we progress on on the show. Um, basically, my I've always been an entrepreneur. It was funny. I went to um, college at San Diego State University, and uh, uh, I was a business a management major. And in my junior year, there was a travel day on uh, on on campus, and one of the guys that helped me go to Europe when I was I just got out of high school was there. And so um, at the end of our conversation, I asked him for a job. He gave me a job, and th that seg segued into um, starting my own company, which was special interest group travel. So my my clients were like the Chargers, the, 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 the O Globe Theater in San Diego, the San Diego Opera. And I did that um, for about 20 years. And I segued out of the travel industry and I, I went in to work for the California Association of Realtors as a financial planner. And um, so I helped the, the members and their clients with tax issues and, and investment issues. And this was all going well until um, 2008. And in 2008, <laughs> <laughs> the, the 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 membership of the California Association of Realtors uh, took a severe dump. That's when we had the the recession, depression. And uh, right before that, I had um, had a friend who kept bugging me about doing this new concept that I'd never heard of. So I thought he was going to try and sell me soap, Amway. So I blew him off and then finally I said, Mike, let's go to lunch and you can tell me what you want to tell me. He told me about cost segregation. I had two clients who had huge tax bills, $50,000. I put, I, I got them um, with a company that did cost seg. I was the one that was kind of behind the scenes and working it. And bottom line, when the recession hit and I got, um, you know, the California Association of Realtors basically ceased to be starting in 2008, the owner of that cost said company said, Joe, you know what you're doing. You know, I would really like you to come and work for my company. Didn't take me long to say that sounds like a great idea since I don't have any income anymore coming in. So I segued into the cost egg industry and that's when the industry was was pretty much in this go around starting. Um, so, you know, when I first was out there talking to clients and knocking on doors, everybody thought it was a scam. They said, oh, no way. You're not going to save me $50,000. That's a scam. There must be, you know, that must be against the law and against the IRS rules and regulations. That was my biggest um, hurdle in, in the first five years was just to tell everybody, no, it's not a scam. Here's the IRS rules and regulations. This is above board. This is the way they want everybody to depreciate their building. And so um, nowadays, uh, if there's any investor that doesn't know about cost segregation, 
then they probably have the wrong accountant. You know, so everybody, if you, you probably already know if you've been watching this show, Lazy Cash is always late, but he made it to the show. So Lazy Cash, say hi to everybody. Everybody say hi to my shop cat, Mr. Lazy Cash. And Joseph, yes. Uh, so some of the things that I, you said in there that were wild is that you were a financial planner. And I, you know, I was a financial advisor from 03 all the way to 2018 when I finally checked out of, uh, well, I, I look back at that and I almost call it like a version of hell, like, you know, kind of, you know, one of those levels of hell that I, that I was living in. But uh, the interesting thing is, is you rode through 2008 as a financial planner, as did I, and boy, was that interesting. But you were, you were working with the, the group, the realtors that basically just that, that vanished. And I think the, the unique thing that you figured out there is this, this little, it's not a loophole. It's just tax code. It's just right there. And it's actually what they prefer you to do that nobody knows about. And, you know, I, I love that you said people thought you were lying to them. This is a scam because every time you try to tell somebody how to make their life better, you know, with saving on taxes, they're like, Oh, hold on a second. Yeah. I don't want those IRS people showing up in my business and auditing me. So I think that, that that's not it. But like how you got where you're at, because like you haven't just gone from like just kind of noodling around with cost segregation. You guys are one of the best in the country. And I know I've been waiting for this podcast. We've had it scheduled a few times because I wanted to get you on because I have lots of clients that ask about this every day. And they're like, you know, who do we talk to? I'm like, I, I don't know yet. Like, give me a second. Let me learn more about this. Now, I've been in real estate, you know, since 06. I've had we primarily did a lot of flips. But then we also did lots of multifamilies and uh, I have never, embarrassingly, I've never done a cost seg and I don't know why. I just don't think it's that well known out there, maybe better now than it was back then. But, you know, like if somebody was looking at their property, they're standing in front of it, they're maybe sitting in it, like how do they determine whether or not a cost segregation study would benefit them or just be a complete waste of time? Well, you know, I've kind of distilled this. Now, there are many, many reasons, but most of them don't apply to, to the real world, to lot, lots of, of folks. Or get, for example, I'll throw this one out. If you belong to a syndicate and the ownership of a building has 500 uh, partners, well, I would say probably for, for, the, for, the, for the 500 partners to get a consensus about how to handle taxes would probably not be a strong idea just because of that, the way that the, the building is owned. But there, I'll, I'll distill it down and tell you, um, th I'm going to be a little facetious, but um, I'll start off with number one, which is facetious, sarcastic, is that if you're not paying any income taxes, you don't need to call Joe. So that's number one. Do you really, I, I'm sorry. Do you really have to tell people that? Oh, yeah. People are so excited about what I do. And I call them up and I go, well, what's your combined income tax rate? Uh, what do you mean? What's your what's your tax rate? You know, you're you you must know that you're state and federal, you're combined. And they're going, Well, I don't pay taxes. It's like, well, why are you calling me? <laughs> you don't need to call me because because you got the best, you've got the best world right there. If you're not paying taxes, you don't need to call Joe. So, so that's listeners like, one. yeah, if you're not paying taxes, like don't don't go any further. Like, don't get excited right. about this. But here's the deal though. Um, you know, you know, the, there is um uh there, there are most people who who don't pay taxes, maybe in the future they might. So listen up, guys, because you want to know about this strategy because it is really the one that's accepted by the IRS. So number two is going to be um, uh, those who this is, was probably maybe the, the reason you shouldn't have done cost seg is you have to be a holder of real estate. So there is a there's a concept called depreciation recapture. And because of depreciation recapture, my advice and I'm a lot li more liberal on this because I talk all around the country and I have a lot of CFOs of very high powered real estate um, developers. And I ask the CFO, OK, what's your hold time? So I've distilled it down to a year and a half to two year hold. If you're a flipper, you're not going to meet that criteria. I will be the first to tell you, don't give me any money to do cost seg uh, because really you're, you, the money I save you in taxes, you're just going to have to pay it back. So why go through this exercise and pay me a fee and get me all the information I need, which isn't a lot, but give me my information. I tell them you're better off not um, doing it. Now, one segue at this point, we can get into it deeper, which is a really good thing for for clients to know is cost segregation 
does reduce depreciation recapture. But again, it's for those that are planning to hold the building at least a year and a half to two years. Yeah, that's not that long. And, and you know, I think a lot of people right now, you know, flipping has been a tough business. It really has in the last yep. couple of years. It's only going to get harder. I mean, right now, hard to find inventory, hard to make a spread, cost of goods, you know, and, and this, everything required to rehab has just gone through the roof. It's just a, it's a tight, tight spread right now. So I think a lot of people are going to this model where they're buying the properties, renovating them, but they're holding them as rentals. Uh, you know, it was commonly before interest rates skyrocketed. It was, you know, the Burr model and now the Burr model kind of burned, uh, you know, more or less. So I just, I think a lot of people are holding single family rentals, you know, whether it's midterm rentals, short-term rentals and all that. So all we need is about two years, a year and a half to two years of hold time. And this starts the pencil. Now, it, it depends on your internal rate of return. If you're going to tell me that you're going to take the tax savings, let's say I save you 30000 in taxes on a single family home, you know, 50000 whatever it is, a relatively small n- amount, because, you know, if you own a building like a multifamily with, that's worth millions of dollars, I'm going to save you hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. But let's say sing- single family ho- home um, that I'm going to save you um, $50,000 uh, in, in income taxes. Um it depends on what you're going to do with the 50,000. If you're going to put that in a savings account in a bank, I'm going to say, don't do it. I'm going to still tell you, don't do it because you need to make money on, on the money. It, and most of my investors, they are, their IRR. I hate to say this, but my investors are, are all pretty good. So I would say their lowest is 20%, but I'm not shocked at 60, 70% IRR. So what does that mean? That means if I give you a dollar today and you can double it in a year and a half to two years, definitely do cost seg. But if I give you a dollar today and in two years, your dollar's a dollar 10, you know, you make 10 cents. I'm going to say, don't bother. Because, because you know, you know, it's the time value of money. That's what we're doing. The same depreciation. You're going to get the same depreciation over the life of the property. For for uh, residential, that is 27 and a half years. For commercial and Airbnbs, because Airbnbs are hotels, that's 39 years. So, bottom line is, um, at the end of the 39 or the 27 and a half years, I'm going to give you the same amount of depreciation. So, there's no smoke and mirrors. All it is. I'm giving you the time value of money. You want this big deduction today because the dollar today is worth a hell of a lot more than the dollar in 27 and a half years. And what I would want everybody to do with that dollar is either buy more real estate or or fix up their properties, improve their properties with the money that I save them. Now, you can do what you want. You can go to Europe. You can, you know take care of your retirement. I, I really don't care. But again, I, I'm big on real estate. And, and again, a segue back, why some people don't pay income taxes is because real estate is so powerful. There's a ton of other tax strategies out there. So it doesn't shock me when somebody says, I don't pay income taxes. I just think, okay, they got something cooking. They're probably very good at it. And great. Call me when you need me. Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, my audience, you're speaking to the right audience here. First off, I mean, that's all we do is teach people how to keep their money working for them and how to be in control of it. And everything you're talking about, number one, gives them control back of tax dollars that they don't have in their hand so that they then can take that money and send it out to work again at a higher return. So this audience, a couple hundred thousand of them, this is ringing true to them. I can guarantee that. The thing that I think is so important, and I'm going to reiterate this, we said it earlier, I'm to hit it again because it's so vital when you think cost seg most folks and i guarantee you you watching this right now you're thinking big apartment complexes because that's usually what we hear we hear oh this syndication this hundred unit building like we're going to do a cost seg but how many of you have heard of cost segs being done for that single airbnb that you just bought during the can pandemic and here's the other thing that airbnb used to make you a bunch of money but now that that's kind of softened a little bit so now it's not making you as much. So right now might be a really good time to look at this strategy because if you're not making as much in your Airbnb off the rents, maybe this will give you the ability to claw back some of that money that you've been waiting for. I, I don't know. Uh, Joseph, what do you th- what do you say to that? Well, okay, here's another little no. Well, I don't I I, I shouldn't say that. Here's another fact that people m- must understand is that you can go back and you can you can use your depreciation extra depreciation for cost seg and get a refund on taxes you paid. I believe you can go back three years Wow! and get a refund. Now, very few of my clients do that. 
uh, because they they're they're good investors. And and if you go back and get a refund, and you know you're going to have to pay more in income taxes at, at the end of the the next year, that it, it's a wash. And I say, why bother getting a refund if you're just going to have to pay it back next tax season? So you know, um, it, it may not work, but you can get a refund. You can go back three years and get a refund, which is, you know, a lot of a lot of clients don't know that. So maybe you're not going to pay income taxes this year. But if you pay them past three years, go back and get that money. Yeah, no, I like that. And, yeah. um, you know, I'm not speaking for everybody here, but I know a lot of, uh, you know, our clients that are paying a lot in taxes. Uh, I, mean, I don't know how many we have that aren't paying any in taxes. I mean. Maybe, but uh, I think a lot of them are really paying a bunch in taxes because we we brought people on, you know, regarding trust planning and 1041 uh, planning and all sorts of things. And that's a big hit. So I think this is going to be also a big hit. So what else do people need to understand when thinking about this strategy and about a cost segregation on their properties? OK, so let's segue for a minute because we're in a unique position uh, when again, when I first started, we only did one style of report. And our model for U.S. Tax Advisors Group Incorporated, or USTAGI, is basically we follow the Audit Technique Guidelines, ATG, for cost segregation published by the IRS. So if you, if you go on Google and do ATG for cost segregation, you'll go to the IRS website and you'll find a, I think it's a 250-page document. That's my Bible. I followed that to the letter. It's a guide to IRS agents telling the agents what they need to look for when they audit cost seg. So I do everything according to the book. So why am I mentioning that to you? Because I think what you need to do is you need to find uh, some entity out there because, you know, they're everywhere. I know my market very well, but a lot of these guys and gals just don't really do everything according to the audit technique guidelines. One of the um, several methodologies recognized by the IRS is called a modeling technique. And so what happened in the very, the top one is called the detailed engineering. The detailed engineering just mean, means that we go out to the property, we document the property, meaning we take pictures, we measure all of the property, both the long-term property, the 27 and a half and the 39 year property and the shorter life property. So what's a short life property? In the interior, the five-year property are things like window coverings, flooring, specialty lighting, cabinets, countertops, sinks, etc. Outside the property is 15-year property. And that's going to be all of your landscaping and all of your, your, your um, driveways and fencing and swimming pools and those kind of land land improvements. So you've got 5, 15, and, um, and then the real property. You've got the main chassis of the building that stays in the real property. So we are just peeling off the personal property and the land improvements to get the acceleration effect. Normally, don't hold me to this, but normally about, 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 if someone can figure 30% of the building basis. So the building basis is what you paid for the building, not what it's worth, what you paid for the building, less the land. And so if you want to do your own estimate, just figure about 30%. If I give you a written estimate, it's going to be a lot more conservative because I don't, I, I believe in being very conservative, but you can figure in your brain about 30% and decide if you have a, a single family home that you paid 124 and you, um, 20,000 is going to be land. And now we have a hundred thousand figure that Joe will give you about 30, a $30,000 new write-off. Uh, against your taxes. And of course, any write-off against your taxes decreases your taxable income. So voila, um, that's what we're going to save save our clients is, is the income taxes by giving them a higher degree of write-offs. So bottom line is what we did is we went out there and we measured everything back in, in those days. But we knew that there's a lot of smaller buildings out there. We could only afford to fly out to Buffalo to do a property in Buffalo if, if it was a big property. What, what do I mean by big? A million dollar plus. Well, there's a Ton, 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 ton of, of buildings out there, single family homes, duplexes, blah, 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 that are a lot less. And so bottom line is we came up with, with a, a, a technique of ours where we are doing a, a modeling or analytical um, review of the property. That means we're not flying out there. That means we're getting the information from you. And what would that be? Well, maybe pictures, definitely an appraisal. 
definitely any documentation you have on the property. And we, our experience and our, our uh, database of properties that we have allows us to go in there and say, okay, I'll pick on Buffalo again, a three bedroom, two bath house in Buffalo, New York. This is what um, is expected to be found in five and 15 and 27 and a half year property. So what we do is we give the IRS the analytical approach. Well, what does that mean for the taxpayer? We charge $625 for current year modeling studies. We charge $675 for look back. And you're going to say, what's a look back, Joe? We can go back 15 years and still make the numbers work. If you do a look back study, you're going to have to tell the IRS you've already used another method and somebody has to do the calculations of how much depreciation you took, how much new depreciation you're getting from cost seg and do the math. We do the hard lifting. We do the math. Your accountant will need to file the form. It's called the 3115 change of accounting method form. They need to do that. We can help them, but we don't sign tax returns. So we can't fill out the, the 3115, but we do give you for the extra $50, we will give you the, um, the, the what's called the 481A adjustments. And so we're one of the few out there that give a really um, high level report. What do I mean by high level? Meaning even though it's an analytical report, we're still giving you a lot of detail. We're not giving you as much detail as the detailed engineering because in the detailed engineering, we know what you have. We're, we're not doing a, you know, a, a, a study based on trying to figure out what you have. We know because we went out there and measured it. So you're not going to get quite as much depreciation, but it's still going to be way worth it. To, to do the analytical study. And we're one of the first ones, uh, we're one of the best ones in the company that do this. We, we do a, a no cost audit defense. If there's any questions by the IRS, we defend our work. Your real estate business lives and dies by the network and the connections that you make. I mean, after all, your network, well, it's your net worth. That's what you always heard, right? If that's an area where you desire improvement, well, Private Money Club, it's for you. PMC saves you precious time and money by bringing the real estate world, well, right to you, right in the palm of your hand. So get in on the action like so many others have by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. So I'm on your website and folks, if you want to check this out, the website is US. T-A-G-I.com. I'll put it in the description, but I'm on here and I've just been playing around as you've been talking, Joseph, and I'm on the tax services, single family resident, same year study, single family resident, look back study. And then you just click get started and then you just enter your info. So it's super simple. Um, but the other thing too, that like I'm, as you're talking, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, you can go back. So right now I have to go back and amend 2022's taxes and, and do 2023. So for me, I'm thinking I've got, you know, I don't have nearly as many rentals as I used to, but I still have a handful. I'm thinking about doing the look back studies for 2022, because that's going to make sense from a tax standpoint. I got, when you talk about a tax bill, I got a whopper of a, a tax bill. So I could use that. And then also in current year. So if I'm looking at this, and I'm sure some of my audience is like this, you know, how would I how would I plan that? Which ones would I want to do same year? And which ones would I want to do, you know, the look back on? Or does it matter? Well, you know what? Here's a, here's a good point. Another segue is that I, I must be very clear. We are not accountants, even though the, <laughs> the name of the company, maybe it sounds like we are, but we're not accountants. We are engineer. We're an engineering for, firm. So bottom line is we defer. What we do is we give everybody a no cost estimate and what we encourage you to do. Now, I will always give my clients help, but we say, go back to your accountant and you guys devise the plan, uh, plan of action. I will tell you, this is important. You mentioned the word amendment. And for me, amendment is a bad, dirty word. <laughs> so when you do cost segregation and you do a look back study, guess what? You're not amending your taxes. I know you have a different situation, but the one thing a lot of clients will go, oh, I'm not going to amend my tax return. Well, that's true because amending tax return is going to put you at the top of the list of people the IRS might want to poke around and, yeah, and, no. and look at. But no, not no, no, for no. cost seg. Cost seg, the, the 3115 is guaranteed. The only use of that form that's guaranteed is for cost segregation. And when you apply it, it's not amending a return. You're going to take what we find for the look back studies, let's say 10 years ago, and we're going to apply them to your 
2023 tax return. So, so no amendments because amendments, you if you can avoid it, avoid it. Gotcha. Yeah, the amendment we're doing is because my my other CPA missed the K-1. So my new CPA said, hey, I want this to be squeaky clean. So let's just amend that and include the K-1, which actually results in, you know, it, it helps me from a tax standpoint because the K-1 was a loss. But that's getting too into the weeds on this. But I I, I, I love this. And I'm on here now, folks. I, I'm literally booking a call uh, right now to discuss this on multiple properties that I have. And they're all, all except for one are single families. And the one that isn't is just two duplexes, uh, two duplexes on one plot of land. So like folks, it, it, you know, if you're, you're listening to the same thing I'm listening to, like, I don't know how this doesn't make sense. You know, at the cost he said for doing that, I mean, I just did some quick math in my head. I, I, I don't see how, for anybody that has a tax issue or, or it's not a tax issue, somebody that owes taxes, how this doesn't pencil. Like, yeah, am I yeah. looking at this wrong? No, I mean, it, it, what it I just took seems like a no brainer. No brainer. When, when, you, when you sit down with your, your account and he goes, okay, pull out your checkbook and write a check. That's when you call me because I, okay, it very, very rarely do I not wipe out or eliminate that, that tax burden. Now, one, another little area that we would have to address is passive versus active does your do you, does your audience know what those are they probably do but go go ahead and explain it i think it's best that we just get it out okay so i give the client the type i give them the deductions or depreciation the same type that they are as a real estate investor. So if they're a passive investor, I give you passive losses. If you're an active investor, I give you active losses. Well, what does that mean? What happened in the 1980s are doctors were buying up really crappy underperforming um, buildings. Why? To get the depreciation expense to wipe out their income as a doctor. The IRS and Congress said, no, 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 you can't do that. So they came up with this rule and it says that if your primary income is not in real estate and there's a formula to 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 determine whether your primary income is a real is real estate. One of the parts of the formula is 750 hours per year in real estate. If you're a, a um, Airbnb, if if you're a um, a, a long term, uh, a short term hold, um, it's going to be um, uh, 500 hours. So you have a little bit of an advantage if you do if you're an Airbnb. So bottom line is, if you are a real a, 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 a active investor. All of my losses go against all of your income. If you're a passive investor, there are passive limitations that you need to consult with your accountant. So what I would do is I would get the estimate. I would take it back to the accountant and I'd say, Mr. or Mrs. Accountant, I'm a, what am I, a passive? And they'll say, you're passive. Then they will tell you whether you should um, get more passive losses. Passive losses go against any passive income. So what is a passive investor? A passive investor, like I said, just means that you're pro you have another income, primary income, and real estate is, your, is, 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 is a passive investment for you. However, don't get me wrong. We have a lot of passive investors. Where it would really come into play where, where I would say don't do cost egg is if you have a $2 million building and you're a passive investor and I give you a whopping um, $800,000 in deductions and you can only use thirty-five dollars or $40,000, I would say don't do <laughs> Don't don't accelerate your depreciation because it's going to take you multiple lifetimes to go through that eight hundred thousand dollars I just gave you. So in that case, if you're a passive investor, you may want to you know you know call me. I'll talk you through it, or or talk to your um your accountant and just say, does this make sense? Absolutely. Well, I'm all booked. I don't know about any of you watching. I didn't mean to take this podcast time, but he's talking. And in my mind, I'm just, I'm just like, this is, this is a no brainer. So I scheduled the call for uh, March 27th. So I'll get mine done. And folks, I, I urge you to do the same thing and, and listen, like I got nothing to gain outside of I'm going to save in some taxes. And I want all of you, my audience to do the same thing. I mean, listen, like we could go on for another hour about this, but like, how much more do you really need to hear? Like, this is something I, I always thought it was available only to large apartment complexes. I truly did. I thought like you needed 
10, 10 units or more or something like that to do this. And when I booked this podcast or when I looked at it and I'm reading, I'm like, wait, single family houses, what? And then I kept reading and reading and reading. And it was just like, that was your specialty. Like, like this is, this is something you, you and your firm do that very few. Well, actually I haven't seen anybody else that does this, you know, does. So it's such a cool, unique niche. It's almost, you're, you're swimming in a blue ocean. Um, you know, is there anything else? I mean, outside of them going to this website, USTAGI.com, the rest is self-explanatory folks. Just click a couple buttons, add your name, your email and uh, schedule a call. And that's about it. But I mean, what, what am I missing, Joseph? I mean, I just feel well, like, I almost feel like it's too easy. Well, there are a lot of misconceptions out there and I've heard them all. But I, I, I'm telling you, most of the misconceptions are just that, misconceptions. So, for example, I talked about depreciation recapture and, and what, what the accountant will come back and say, well, wait a minute, you're just going to have to pay back the depreciation. So why would you want to take it up front? Well, the reason why you want to take it up front is what I said before, because the time value of money, which accountants don't understand the time value of money. They're more numbers, people. They don't know that you're an investor and the time value of money means that, yeah, you want to use your dollars today, not over 27 and a half years. So bottom line is, um, you know, you really, there's really very few reasons. Depreciation recapture does reduce with, with um, uh, cost seg. Do I have a minute to explain that? Yes, please. Okay, here's what happens. And this is a very little, this is a, a, a kernel that most accountants don't realize until I explain it to them and then they, the light bulbs go on. So let's say you buy a laptop five years ago for $2,000. What's that laptop worth today, five years later? Nothing. Probably $50 if you can sell it for parts yeah. on eBay. It's worth basically nothing. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're taking the same concept and applying it to the five and the 15-year property because now you know what the five-year property is because guess what? We all detailed it out, the five-year property. So you know exactly what the five-year property is. You know exactly what the 15-year property is. So you make this statement when you're filing the taxes when you sell for cash. By the way, depreciation recapture is only applicable for a cash sale. So if you 1031 exchange, it, it doesn't apply, only for cash. If you die and leave it to your heirs, doesn't apply, only for cash. So bottom line is that you make the same argument to the IRS. I know what my five-year property is. It's now five years later. My five-year property is not worth it. It goes off the table for depreciation recapture because there's only, you know, I would come up with some silly residual value, like, you know, $50, just because you don't want to get greedy. The 15 year property, you would take off a third because you've used it for five out of the 15 years that comes off the table for depreciation recapture. So voila, what happens is with, with this misconception is I will tell the accountant they are wrong. Cost egg reduces depreciation recapture. End of story. So there's so many misconceptions, but they rarely, 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 rarely apply. All you need to do is give me a call. I can explain if your accountant pushes back and says this, this, and this, and this, I most likely, I'm not perfect, but most likely I will tell you that, yeah, your accountant's probably not accurate. Yeah. You know, and one of the things too, I want to preface here, you know, as we're talking about this is find yourself an accountant that does actually understand this stuff like that. That's, I know sometimes that's a tough thing to find, but like my CPA that I just, just hired in the report he did after analyzing all of my tax returns, he specifically said, look into cost segregation. And, and you know, and again, I thought, I don't know why he's saying this. Maybe he doesn't know that all I have are singles and doubles, and that's probably not going to make sense. But he literally put that in the report when he did my, my audit, if you will, of all my tax returns. So just find a CPA that understands understands that. And folks, all of you are the five percenters, right? You're not the 95%. Otherwise you wouldn't be listening to my podcast. You're the 5%. So therefore you understand time value of money. You understand that the dollars you make today will never, ever be worth more than they are now. We talk about this in all of our videos, all of our presentations. You got to take the money that you have today and make it work for you today. And that's why we, we're not huge fans of retirement accounts. Like it's not something I, I really love. I mean, they're out there. We show people how to be the bank with them, but retirement accounts are the same thing. People put money away for five, 10, 15, 20 years, hope, you know, and hoping to pray then to take the money out. That's weaker than at a higher tax rate. Like folks, like just today is what matters. Today is what you can control. So get your money working for you today. 
day. And if there's tax advantages, ways you can tap into something like this, do it today. What would you wait for? I love that analogy about a laptop because I'm thinking, you know, we're in the process of moving and I just pull out an old Dell and I'm like, this thing goes in the garbage can. Yeah. You know, it's worthless. But it yeah. was it was an $1,800 laptop, probably like you said, five, six years ago. Well, all I need to do is point to the ground on a single family home and say, OK, your carpet is five years old. Is it really worth anything? Oh, maybe you can get another year out of it, but probably it's worth nothing. If you have that carpet as a rental for five years. I would say it's probably not worth too much money. <laughs> no one's going to buy your carpet. <laughs> That's a really good analogy. So Joseph, like, listen, like I'm in, I, I'm, I'm all the way there. And, and folks, if you're listening, like, I don't know how you can't see the value in this. If you have properties and I know most of you do, cause you wouldn't be listening to this. I mean, this podcast back in its, you know, its, its infancy was called the real estate money school. Today we dropped the real estate part to make it more vast, but I, I, Joe, I, I, I'm thankful. I finally got you on this podcast. I know we, we took us a while to make it happen, but uh, I think this is going to be great. I think you're going to help a lot of my listeners, you know, just save a whole bunch of money that they didn't know they could save. So thank you so very much for your time. Uh, and again, you know, is this the best place where they can find you? Yeah. USTAGI.com. USTAGI.com. US Tax Advisors Group Incorporated. And you can find me, you can you can book a, a, a call with me, um, reserve a call with me, or you can just get your free analysis. Um, there's a link in there that says, I would like to get a, you know, an analysis and then give me some basic property information. I'm only looking for, okay, what did you pay for the property? What date did it close? Or what date is it expected to be closed? And um, and what the address of the property. And, and basically with that little bit of information, I can work up an estimate and then a fee, of course. We know the fee for the modeling. If we do a detailed engineering, we do not, We it's engineering time. So we have to look at the property to tell how much time it's gonna take. So detailed engineering, I don't have a formula for. We look at the property, but our, our rates are very affordable. So don't get scared. The days of when I first started, if you did a $10 million hotel, that study would cost $50,000. Today, no, I mean, it, it's dropped dramatically because of automation. But Joseph also too, like, well, think about that. Like that big hotel you just talked about, $50,000. Some people are gasping. Oh my God, that's so much. But cost is only an issue in the absence of value. Like how much did they save in taxes for that 50 grand? Yeah, they, they saved, oh, probably at a 40% tax rate, which I'm in California. So that's what our tax rate is. They saved probably a million dollars. Spend 50 <laughs> to get a million. I'm sorry. What part of the value didn't you understand yeah, there? But like, literally, this is the way people I think, know. right? I and that's know. why you have to say that. Yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah. 50,000 bucks. Like it's yeah. a lot, but a million dollars for 50 grand. Like, I don't know anybody in my <laughs> ecosystem that would like say that doesn't yeah. make sense. But there are the 95 percenters out there that would be like, oh, yeah. God, I can't believe they spent 50 grand on that. But, uh, oh boy. I, all right. I really appreciate your time and folks, like, I hope you all enjoyed this. I know it was like right to the point, but that's all you need. Like, you're not trying to create the rocket ship here. That's what Joseph's company did. Like they're the engineers, let them engineer your solution. And that's what they're going to do for me. I don't know. I uh, think some of you are probably doing the same thing. So click the link in the description and get on with it. Joseph, thank you for your time. Thank you. Good job. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it.